Mm -hmm. You are using the computer audio. Now, oh, it's recording already. I don't want it to record for them. So welcome everyone. We were just starting to get a list of who would uh, be doing the readings of the novenas. So I'm asking if there's anybody who would like to do number six. Hands up, hand up if you've got number six. Yeah, White Dove. White Dove from New Zealand will do number six. Number seven, has anyone got the novenas for that? Yes, beautiful, Ellen. Okay, I'll just minimize this now. Well, there's a way down the bottom. Number there. seven. That's gentleman. And that's Narayan. That's Narayan. Have you got have you got the novenas? No. No. Okay, number eight. Yep. This one. Oh, Gina. Gitanjali. You'll do number eight. Okay. So just remember which ones you're doing, although I'm writing them down and I'll introduce you. And lastly, number nine. Yes, Elizabeth, Tara, very good. Okay, so welcome everybody. And um, I would like to acknowledge the American emissaries as well. So we have Faranissa there. So Faranissa, and who else do we have that's a, an, an emissary besides Amir, Amina? I mean, oh, we have Nuranisa. Nuranisa in the corner, yes. Yeah, and, uh, and Subana. Is I'm also Subana, who we don't see, but welcome, Subana. And then I have all the beautiful Mary Magdalene's that we've had anointings for in New Zealand. So lastly, uh, I did Gitanjali was on, my, on the last retreat. So Gitanjali. KJ Phoenix has been a great support for me. Um, let me see who else, Elizabeth Page, yeah, and of course we have Sue Lennox from my own home country, so Sue is there, beautiful, and anyone else I've missed, please tell me, because <laughs> I can't see everybody, <laughs> yes, Amira, Amira is also emissary there, beautiful, and two people waiting, okay. Hi, Zebanasra, it's Hadia in Total. Oh, Hadia, welcome. Yes. Bearer of the Sacred Stones. <laughs> yes, Bearer of Sacred Stones. She was very valuable for our ceremony there. So, okay, I'm muting you all again. And there's Sally. Sally's finally come in. Okay. Okay, I'm mute all. No, you can't. All right. Okay, we're going to start off um, with the Mary Magdalene prayer. So, Amina. Just a minute, I'm on. going to call it out. We're very high tech, we've learned how to share screens. Mm. Okay. Uh, can you see it? Not yet. Okay, I lost my. Oh, I know, I'll put you on speaker view. Oh. Okay. Here it is. Now, what do I do here? Share. <laughs> well, I thought I had this mastered, but I don't. So <laughs> let's go ahead and say it. All right. Mm -hmm. So we'll just say it. Blessed are you, Mary, for you did not waver at the sight of the risen master. You who were his companion and whom he loved more than any other woman. Holy bride. Apostle of the Apostles, be at my right shoulder as I walk forth in the infinite light and bless me and all of us with your eternal presence. Amen. So now I would like to introduce you to Amina who will now introduce the Novenas and how all this came about for her many years ago. Over to you. It is wonderful to be here, and uh, thank you so much, all of you, for coming. What a great turnout from all over the world, practically. Um, who knew? Who knew 12 years ago that uh, Mary would still be alive and 
living in all of these beautiful hearts around the world. I'm just uh, almost overcome. Um, ordinarily, I have a, an annual uh, Dancing with Mary Magdalene event around her feast day in July. Um, but a very special time for me has always been every year during Lent and the Easter season, which is when the dances first started coming through. And so this year I thought I would um, honor that and do something locally in the form of a workshop that was called the Easter Journey with Mary Magdalene. And I wanted to uh, bring uh, to everyone's attention the first dances that came through and how those very first dances uh, really contained Mary's message um, and the things that she really wanted us to hear and to learn and to practice. Um, and so in the form of novenas, I sent out the first nine dances, a recording of the first nine dances. And uh, the first dance is called Miriam. And it was um, inspired when I was reading the uh, commentaries of the uh, Gnostic Gospel of Mary Magdalene by Jean-Yves Leloup. And actually, uh, it was at that point on Easter Eve when the first dance came through uh, that all of this started. And that was in 2008. On Easter morning, I woke up to the alabaster jar. And so it continued from, from there and um, still, it still does. Uh, so I'm going to read for you the first novena for the first dance, Miriam. <clears throat> In my reading of the commentary uh, from the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, I came to a section entitled Miriam of Magdala. And I felt a sort of magical resonance transmitted from the page. Perhaps because Le Loup is French, images of Baroque dancers in fancy dress are contained in this dance. The message of Miriam in this first dance is to awaken us to the power of the natural balance of the divine feminine and masculine within ourselves, and to suggest that we be open to her story in France. This is the same message that has come through countless other sources in various forms in the past few years, through books, music, art, movies, both fictional and documentaries, and dance. With this first dance, Mary suggests we may begin to experience this awakening through the movements themselves. In Mary's saying, number 214 in part, she tells us, those who see male and female see only an appearance, for inwardly there is neither female nor male. These appearances are like shadows, and those who grasp at shadows and do not look to the light miss the mark of truth. Mary invites us to dance out of the shadows as sons and daughters of the light, so that we may achieve the inner balance we need for our own transformation in becoming fully human thus awakening to the mystery of our being. And uh, before we, uh, we're going to play uh, the first track for you, but um, <gasps> Sorry. Oh. How did that happen? Did you mute me? <laughs> Sorry, somebody came in late. I just want to say hello to Angela here. She came in late and then everybody gets muted, you see. So you're unmuted now, sorry. All right. So uh, through these first nine dances, um, we accompany Jesus and Mary through the anointing, the crucifixion, and the resurrection, and then and beyond. Uh, so we will experience some of that this evening as we go through these first dances. Beautiful. So, I'll try to share the picture. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. 
That's all right. Somehow the share screen isn't working. Mm -hmm. So. Richie's wants to say. Okay, so we have from Elaine Pagels from the Gnostic Gospels. She defines Gnosis, and this is what Mary Magdalene has brought. The other apostles had, uh, and the, the synoptic gospels we know of, they went out proselytizing on the outside, like the outside, the esoteric, mes the exoteric message. And Mary Magdalene held these things very close to her heart mm -hmm. because she was about finding the gnosis or the inner experience and the wisdom within our own hearts. It was uh, all about how our intuition could align itself with the high, our highest truth to know oneself. And to know oneself is to know the ultimate source of divine reality and experience ourselves as the divine reality and a sacred unity. So this transformation of consciousness is what leads to Gnosis and the kingdom of God. So Mary Magdalene was the disciple. So one of her qualities, I'm going to go through the different qualities that the different um, novenas depict. And the Lord said that um, Mary was, through her questioning, able to probe deeper into the mystery of the kingdom of God. She completely understood the teachings and she was, as such, the model of the true disciple. So the words of Jesus are not so much about informing us, but stimulating our own imaginative faculties and our intuition so that we may come to know for ourselves and become that disciple for ourselves so that we may experience that sacred unity. So let's have the reading for Novena 2. So Phoenix. Now that's you, you're number two. Oh, oh I'm number two. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. It's great to have a collective consciousness here. <laughs> so number two. Mm -hmm. The alabaster jar, one of my mm -hmm. favorite dances, second in the series of novenas, celebrating the first nine dances of the Dancing with Mary Magdalene cycle. The second dance came through on Easter Sunday, wow. on the morning after the first dance. Mary was really present with you. Miriam appeared and represents one of the defining episodes in Mary's relationship with Jesus. As he prophesied in the Gospels, from this day forth, she shall be known as Migdala, for she shall be as a tower to my flock, and the time will soon come when her tower shall stand alone by mine. In early Christian symbolism, a vase represented the container of the soul, and the essence of the soul is represented by the fragrance of the oil. So it's great just to reflect on that. The vase represents the container of the soul. I haven't got a picture here. And the essence of the soul is represented by the fragrance of the oil. You mean this? No. The degree of Mary's spiritual attainment is indicated when it is said in the scriptures that the perfume from her vase filled the house. Mary typified the heart path or path of devotion when she chose to sit at the master's feet and then later to anoint his feet with spikenard the rare and costly oil. So I'll go back to number two. Mm -hmm. The 
Mr. John, who takes the oil of my devotion. The oil of Mr. John, who takes the oil of my devotion. So Mary Magdalene, she was a practitioner of devotion. She was a representative of unconditional and unreserved love. She washed the feet of Jesus with her tears. Mm. She dried them with her hair. She kissed them and poured oil over them, all out of an act of humility. She loved fully and was committed to her spiritual transformation, to Jesus and to his teachings. She was the embodiment of love with wisdom. So let's have Novena 3. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Lovely. Mishia. Do dance, Mishia, is our first introduction to the symbolism of Jesus and Mary as the sun and moon of love. Jesus embodies the solar qualities of radiating and positivity. Mary, the lunar qualities of receptivity and reflection. Between them, a circuit of light is formed through which the Christ presence is fully embodied. Messiah is Aramaic for the Greek Messiah. In the ancient culture in which Jesus and Mary lived, Messiah meant the anointed, the ordained and the consecrated. It might also mean the appointed or one who carries the light of God. According to Hebrew scripture, kings, priests, and sometimes prophets received the anointing oil when taking on their respective offices. Aramaic scholar Rocco Erico says, Jesus was the anointed or the Christ because his ordination was from God. No organization or special religious group anointed Jesus of Nazareth. God appointed him. That is, life itself ordained Jesus to carry out a unique mission for humankind. According to the Gnostic tradition, the Christos was embodied by both Yeshua and Mariam, Jesus and Mary in Aramaic. Mary's saying number 90 expresses it this way. What the anointed is... I am and you are. For this reason, the anointed has come to remind those caught in the spell of forgetfulness. We're ready to hear Mashiach now. It's mute. We can't hear anything. Yes, she 
So what was this anointing that Mary had that was similar to the anointing that Yeshua had? Ultimately, she was filled with the spirit of perfect light. She had achieved spiritual perfection. If Peter and the other disciples had been filled with this same perfect love, Mary Magdalene's sex would not have been an issue. And this has been a pattern of prejudice against women down the ages. We must awaken to the repetitive patterns that bind and restrict our growth and evolution. Do not crucify yourself on the cross of self-imposed or culturally imposed limitations. We must be willing to ignite the spirit of light, the deeper spiritual wisdom within our nature that wants to be expressed. Mm. Novena number four. That's uh, Sue. That's me. Yes. I um, I have to comment that yesterday afternoon when I was out walking with my beautiful puppies in the forest, um, this song was singing me the. Yet the first song, the one we just had, the um, Yeshua and Mashiach. So, uh, mm, blessings. Nukva Hokma. Fourth in a series of novenas celebrating the first nine dances. The way of Mary Magdalene is primarily experiential and her qualities are experienced through the variety of names and titles attributed to her. According to Gnostic sources, sometimes Mary's presence can be very playful, likened to the feminine archetype of the trickster, at other times dark and mysterious. Mm -hmm. Wisdom has built her house of seven pillars. She has prepared a feast, mixed the wine and also set the table. She has sent her women friends out to the highest places in the town to announce. Come, eat my food and drink my wine. Live, walk in ways of understanding. Knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. Adapted from Proverbs. Beautiful. Thank you, Sue. Here we go. Uh, let me just add, since it wasn't included in that novena, that Nukva Hakma means daughter of holy wisdom. Nukva is the Hebrew for daughter, and of course, Hakma, the Hebrew for divine wisdom. Beautiful. Thank 
who may not know the words Kali and Kala. So Kali, very similar to our Hindu goddess, as the, the goddess of the dark or the shadow, the, um, the hidden aspects of our being. And Kala is the bride of light. So all the things that we love to express. So this is why we are expressing our light this way, but we need to find out what is the dark side of our being to be fully integrated to be a full anthropos, a full human being. So nothing is excluded in this tradition of Mary Magdalene. And here she also has represented spiritual authority, honoring one's experience and your spiritual authority. So the inner star, which is often talked about in Mary Magdalene's uh, teachings is about the principle of self-sufficiency, looking within and trusting what is there looking for an opening through which the absolute can manifest through the dark, through the light, through the hard times, through the good times, always being a daughter of wisdom. Okay. Let's go to so, number five. The Spirit and the Bride, Novena Day Five celebrating the first nine dances of the Dancing with Mary Magdalene cycle. In Revelations 22:17, we read, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Let all that heareth say, Come. And let those that are athirst come. And whosoever will, let them take the water of life freely. This is an invocation to Jesus and Mary, the spirit, Ruach, of God, and the anointed bride, Kala, and an affirmation of their divine union. The teacher is like a spring that offers water to all who are thirsty. And Miriam is the holy bride who unites with her beloved to say to all, come. Thank you, Faranissa. The spirit and the bride say, come, let all who hear say, come, may all the thirst drink freely, all the world's little light, no one fall The spirit and the bride say, come. of the bride because Kala is the bride of light and Mary is a, was a model of this presence and attention as this bride of light as the bride of, of Yeshua Mary did not abandon Jesus as the other male apostles did 
but remained with him through the crucifixion and the entombment. She cared for his body and was the first to see, hear and speak to the resurrected Jesus. Her presence and attention was to her teacher and her beloved. So we pray that we may have this level of presence and attention to our inner guide. Let us have number six. And that's White Dove. So, Rachma Mshiha, sixth in a series of novenas. This chant was originally inspired by the sayings of Mary, number 138. It reads, of all things, I wish you to have the sacred heart of Christ which is compassion. For compassion is the womb of the mother in which Christ is conceived. And in this, Christ will be born in you. Pray to the mother spirit to have her womb and to conceive and birth the anointed in you. I will pray for you also. The ancient root of the Aramaic word rachme is ram meaning womb, or an inner movement coming from deep within ourselves, radiating heat and love. This root was later interpreted as mercy from the Greek, and can also mean compassion. Mshiha is the Aramaic form of Messiah, the anointed, or Christ. Thus, this chant might be translated as the love, mercy, and compassion of the Christ is be born in you. The counter melody, Ama Ema, uses the ancient Hebraic name for the primordial creator mother. Okay. Here we go. Yeshua Meshiah and Ama Ayima. Anna. Oh, wrong one. So, wrong one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Rahman well, Mashia is number 10. It's the next track along. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Just breathe that beautiful chant in just for a moment. Rahme Mashia Ama Ayima. One of the qualities of Mary Magdalene is her deep listening. Love is born from deep listening. 
Love is born from our wounds. Empathy is birthed from the womb of our heart. Whoever has ears to hear should hear. These were the famous words of Yeshua. Hearing is related to the heart. It is subject to our physical senses, but it's also related to ether, and so is mostly con so more closely connected to our divinity. Hearing leads us to spiritual transformation. Le hearing from within and from without. Okay. The next one we have mm -hmm. Ellen. Yes. Raboni, Novena Day 7. Raboni, also Rabuni, the name that Mary spoke when she saw Jesus at the tomb, as we read in John 20, 16. Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Resources suggest this title could be translated as Beloved Master, implying tenderness, intimacy, and respect, or an affectionate form of rabbi. In this dance are both walking with and as Mary, feeling her despair when approaching the tomb and her exultation upon discovering her arisen Lord, Yeshua, beloved teacher and friend. It is during this encounter that Mary becomes the apostle of the apostles. Saying 20, a woman said to Mary, you saw the risen savior first, what did he look like? Mary said to her, he looked like no man, nor angel, nor God, but his appearance was the image of the human one, the image and likeness of the living God. Truly I tell you, whoever beholds the risen Savior, it is as though he or she is the first to see him. Mm. beloved master so when I think of the word master I think that I'm in service to the master and service was one of the qualities that Mary Magdalene represented 
It was a surface which was an outward manifestation. She served her Lord, her master, her beloved companion. But it was also the contemplative path, the interior path that Mary Magdalene chose. So hers was both an active and a contemplative path. She chose to support her authentic self, her inner self, rather than her dutiful self in many occasions, as we hear from the stories of Martha and Mary, when Martha was serving and Mary was at the feet of Yeshua. Now we will have Novena number eight, and that will be Gitanjali. Gitanjali? Hello. Yes. Ali Kalazika. Novena day eight. Eighth in the series of Novenas celebrating the first nine dances of the Dancing of Mary Magdalene cycle. YHVH are sacred Hebrew seed syllables representing the most sacred and unpronounceable name of God in the Kabbalistic tradition, often transliterated as Yahweh. Perhaps in combining Mary's titles with the most holy name of God, we may open a doorway for a deeper experience of remembrance of both the light and dark aspects of our own being. Saying to the ten, one of oh, hundred and ten, Mary's disciples. appears black to those who do not know her. Yet to those who love her and who draw her, her near, she is white brilliance. Her image is as the starry night sky and the light of the heavens and supernal abode are in her. To pass beyond, you must enter her embrace, even as the Lord embraced her. So the Yod Hey Bold Hey will be their divine mother, father, uh, divine daughter, and divine son. That's what we are going to be singing in the first part. Thank you. 
this um, chant reminds me of the inclusivity of the teachings that Mary Magdalene and Yeshua have come to show us that there is no separation, that there is no male or female, everything is included. Divine father, divine mother, divine son, divine daughter, daughter of light, daughter of the dark, son of light, son of the dark. We all are part of that. And it reminds me of the beautiful divine feminine quality that we have of inclusivity and realizing the interconnectedness of all of life, which we are all awakening. I know we have awakened, but we pray that the rest of the world awakens to this as we are in this time of imposed crisis or crisis anyway. There's many experiencing it in hard ways. And um, we bring our heart of compassion to those in those situations at this moment. And now we come to the last novena, number nine, and we have Elizabeth. Elizabeth, can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. In the cave of my heart, Novena Day 9. Ninth is the series of Novena celebrating the first nine dances of the Dancing with Marie Magdalena cycle of dances. According to Annie Williams, musician and Magdalena teacher, Mary is finally rising from the hidden caves of our unconscious. Caves have long been a symbol that lead us deep into the mysteries of the divine feminine. They represent the dark womb of creation, the fecund center of pure potentiality from which all manifested form arises. Saying 84, Mary said, did God give birth to creation without a womb? No, indeed, for creation is in God's womb, and until it is complete, it shall not emerge. This song weaves together the many threads of symbolism in the love story of Yeshua and Mariam. One could imagine her singing a prayer to her beloved, from deep within her being. This brings us to the end of our nine day journey with Mariam of Magdalena, the song she may have sung to her beloved in the cave of Saint Baume or in Saint Baume in or near Provence, France. In the Golden Legend, we are told of Mary's last years being spent there where she lived, taught, and meditated until her death. For devotees of Mary, this site is one of the most popular pilgrimage destinations today. Mm -hmm. Beautifully read by beautiful Elizabeth Tara, who has been to the Cave of Saint Balmier. Yeah? And I come from Provence. And from France. So bonjour. thank you. <laughs> bonjour et merci beaucoup. Je vous en prie. <laughs> Here we go. In the cave of my heart, I hear the song of my beloved singing ish, ish, Allah. Ish, Ish, Allah. From deep weather, more of a gibbering sound, mercy and passion are born. Mercy and compassion are born. Allah. 
In the cave of my heart, I hear the song of my beloved singing ish, ish, Allah, ish, ish, Allah. From deep within the womb of the shimmering sound, mercy and compassion are born. Mercy and compassion are born. in the cave of our hearts, the place of solitude. The place of solitude is the place of purification and transformation. The place of great struggle and the great encounter. It is the place of our salvation. Releasing and detaching from the aspects of light, of life that do not serve the inner light of Gnosis. Our death, is the release and detachment from old patterns which no longer serve. This is a symbol of the cross and the crucifixion. We give birth to new or unexpressed parts of ourselves through silence and solitude. The release of the seven demons or the purification of the seven chakras was Mary Magdalene's spiritual transformation. But silence and solitude nurtured her inner knowing. So even once the liberation happens, we still need to feed and nurture our inner knowing through silence and solitude. So what I'd like to do now is give you a little Mary Magdalene Rose meditation. It's very short. And so we enter into this cave of our hearts. And after that, I'll stop the recording and we can have a few minutes going to the toilet, getting a drink of water while we set up for the ritual. So, closing your eyes and breathing into your heart, feeling the swing of your breath, the gentle in breath and out breath. You might want to breathe in Erachman and breathe out Erachim, having these qualities of mercy and compassion on your breath. And imagine your heart is the cup, the holy grail, the holy grail which receives love. See this as a place where you can work on yourself, purify yourself, and make peace in your heart. Soothe your emotions. Bring your awareness continually to this regular swing of your breath and the qualities of Erachman, Erachim. Connect with the earth and the heavenly energies. Imagine light traveling down your head to your toes and connecting to the heart of the earth, light flowing 
from the heavens to the center of the earth. You are the channel. While you are in this state of receptivity, listen to your heartbeat and synchronize your breath with your heartbeat. See your heart opening like a rose. It starts as a closed bud, a beautiful red, firmly closed bud. And with every breath and your heartbeat, see that rose gradually opening up until all the petals unfold, opening up to the love that you are. It is the sun of your love that opens this rose. The rose then transforms into the grail cup, your heart filled with love. And say to Miriam, I offer you this grail cup. Fill it with your love, your transcendent, all-embracing love, your compassion, your mercy. Fill me with your love, Mariam. See this love as your freedom, your soul's liberation, Breathe in this love as infinite in all realms of existence. This love offers itself. It never imposes itself. Keep imagining that this love is pouring into your cup. This abundance enters your body fills your cells with such a sweetness and such a perfume. The sweetness of mercy, the perfume of compassion. Let this love flow around you and into <laughs> Spread it beyond yourself. Allow this love to touch others, others in your household, in your neighborhood, in your country, until it touches all of humanity, all of the earth, and all of nature. Through this love, you are capable of touching all beings in creation through love. And Mary gives you a message, peace be with you. Something has now transformed in your being and you will not be the same. Ya Mariam. So keeping yourself on mute when you are wanting to get up and stretch, make yourself comfortable for the, <clears throat> the ritual that's coming up in a few minutes. Go to the toilet. Take the rose in your heart with you. Mm. Mm. Do you want to go to the toilet?
Hey, Anna. Wanted, I just wanted to touch base. Yes, right. Right. Let's have a look at your um, altar and see if we can see it. Okay. Oh, this is something going on with this CD. Okay. You need to. Andrew, every time you talk. There it is. Okay. A little bit. Perfect. Yes, that's it. That's it. You look beautiful. Gorgeous. I have to change my glasses. I can't see out of these unless I'm on the computer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see now. Uh, let's see if this uh, is that better. That's better, isn't it? Play the sun in the middle of love. Can you find what number that is for me? Great. So I'll get everybody to stand. Um, I wondered if we might want to do Mariam Malkuta. Um, as an opening? Oh, well, yeah, when they come back and just uh, to uh, kind of center the energy. Mariam Malkuta, just sing that. Okay, great. And um, then after the, yeah, I'll do Mariam Malkuta. Then we'll. No, no. Uh, I can, I'll just play it. I'll play it. Okay. Okay, then I'll read the introduction and I'll get everybody to raise their arms for the invocation. Okay, and so while you're reading that, I'll just go over to the altar yeah. and uh, wait. I have a quick toilet break. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, are we all back? Right. <laughs> Amina, your camera is not on. I know. Welcome back, everyone. And Premanand has just joined us from New Zealand. So lovely to see him. We are entering now the service for the um, Triple Goddess, and it happens to be full moon right now. So Amina has created um, a ritual for the Triple Goddess, for the full moon and for the new moon. So maybe we can get together to do the, the dark moon ritual, the new moon ritual, when uh, it's that time. So first of all, Amina is going to start with Mariam Malkuta, so we can all sing together. Mariam Malkuta is the practice that uh, I have been given for these troubling times. Uh, Mariam Malkuta is um, in this uh, chant, we're combining uh, the name Malkuta, which is the ancient uh, name for the uh, great mother in the Middle East. And we're com combining it with the phrase Tete Malkuta, which from the Aramaic Lord's Prayer is, uh, I just drew a blank, <laughs> thy kingdom come. <laughs> okay, so these are the words we're singing, Mariam Malkuta and Tete Malkuta. Mm -hmm. 
Mario Makuta Mario Makuta Mario Makuta Mario Makuta Kate Makuta Kate Makuta Kate Makuta Kate Makuta Mario Makuta Mario Makuta Mario Makuta Mario Makuta Kate Makuta Kate Makuta Kate Makuta Kate Makuta Mario Makuta Mario Makuta Mario Makuta Mario Makuta Kate Makuta Kate Makuta Kate Makuta Kate Makuta Thank you, Amina. And just in case some of you are wondering, we all get stage fright at times with things. So we had Mariam Malkatu and then Tete Malkuta. It's a bit of a tricky <laughs> <little> backwards. <laughs> yeah, we had it a little backwards, but that's all right. Frankwood's backwards, all the same. It's all inclusive. <laughs> and well, I like they all come from the same root. And so, oh, you know, and they both, uh, they mean uh, not only the kingdom come, but the queendom. So it's a combination yeah. of the masculine and feminine that yes, um, Mariam contains and is um, giving us this ancient sense of empowerment, the matriarchal empowerment. Um, and the other thing I'm, I'm saying, I'm using it as a practice these days because of this meaning of, um, it's the cosmic I can, I can. And it, that uh, affirmation is very empowering. Yeah. So it gets me through the day sometimes. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that practice. And I love um, Sadi's transliteration of Te Te Malkuta when he says, come into the bridal chamber of our hearts. I love yeah. that picture, that image. Prepare us for the divine union of the beloveds so that we may walk as kings and queens with every creature. I can. I will. Can. Yay. <laughs> So we will start off with, um, what are we going to start off with? Okay. So the readings and prayers, I'll just give you the introduction. <clears throat> the readings and prayers contained in this ritual are drawn from the work of Megan Don in her book, the new divine feminine, a must read for everyone. She represents us with a profound system of working with the many aspects of the divine feminine through Mary Magdalene as the way shower. The seven faces of Mary are presented as the light and dark aspects of our being, the Kala and Kali. Through the maiden daughter bride, the mother, the crone, the triple goddess. The great goddess who created all of life, the heavens and the earth, from the substance of herself alone, was perceived frequently as a triple goddess, the maiden, mother of all life, and crone, or old wise woman. And I, I love and Nina has called herself, and I recognize her as the cosmic, cosmic crone of wisdom. We greet Thank you, cosmic crone. <laughs> She was the moon goddess in her three phases, waxing, full and waning. And today we invoke these three, as, these three faces of the triple goddess of light. So as Amina is saying the invocation, I ask you all to raise your hands or you may stand if you wish as well. Most gracious lady, maiden, mother, and crone of humanity, goddess of the full moon, 
we greet you with great rejoicing. We welcome you to our circle and ask that you guide us in this time of power and rightness and fill us with the fullness of your light. And would you say this Mary saying now, Anna? Yes. So Mary saying, if you know the path of the moon, you will know the path of the sun. And this is the music from the sun and the moon of love. Oh no. Which one is it? Sun. You told me. Oh, 13. 13. To the glory of the triple goddess, we kindle the light. Symbolically representing the daughter bride of light. The sacred daughter and holy bride have been little known, her energy lying dormant in many of us. And yet she brings the very vitality and freshness of life. She awakens us to new ways of being and living, and she is the feminine body living as the light. Hear our prayer to the daughter bride of the light. Daughter bride of light, I call to you from the deepest recesses of my soul. I call for you to return to the land of my soul where it waits to give birth in this world. Bring your inspirations, your dreams, your new ways of being, especially those 
that I cannot even imagine? Why do I hold so tenaciously to the old solid ways when they do not make me happy? May I trade futility for fertility and may we together breathe into these deadened bodies and hearts, enlivening them for the adventure that awaits. May we break open all those places that have closed and withered. May we dance freely in the light. And we will chant, Amina will chant, and we can follow along with her, Kala Nura Ainsof Or. We'll chant together uh, seven times, Kala Nura Ainsof Or, which means Bride of Light and the Infinite Light. Together, Kala Nura. Ein Sako, Kala Nura, Ein Sako, Kala Nura, Ein Sako, Kala Nura, Ein Sako, Kala Nura, Ein Sako, Ein Sako, Kala Nura, Ein Sako, Kala Nura, Ein Sako, Kala Nura, Ein Sako. And then just breathe in, Kala Nura, breathe out, Ein Sako. To the glory of the crippled goddess, we kindle the light. Invoking the mother of light. <laughs> the mother has many forms and faces, which she shows us through all traditions. However, her light has been dimmed and her darkness covered over. May she be allowed to shine in her brightness, revealing herself in our own consciousness. May we let her shine through us as us. Hear our prayer to the woman of light. Woman of light, we pray to you in all your splendor and your brightness of soul. May we come to our birthing with grace, with openness, with desire, letting complacency fall aside and with old energies willing to die. Let our heavenly soul be known within and all around us. For this is our saving grace, our soul known in you our soul born in you. Praise to you, Mother, O, oh, our woman of light, our great cosmic crone of the stars. And we'll chant together, Ama Aima, Ein Sof Or, which means Mother of Unity and the Infinite Light. Ama Aima, Ein Sof Or. 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 Ama Aina, Ein Sof Or. Ama Aina, Ein Sof Or. Ama Aina, Ein Sof Or. To the glory of the triple goddess, we kindle the light, invoking the cosmic crone of light. Igorette, the crone, has two faces. One life-giving, the other death-bringing or destruction. The crone of light lives with a vision of the greater cosmos and how this world can and must serve the divine plan. The crone in her life-giving aspect is known as the ancient one of knowledge. She is the very soul of creation 
and the very soul of humanity. She is the great cosmic mind womb of spacious nothingness that contains the great and ancient knowledge and the everythingness or the chaos. Hear our prayer to the ancient one of knowledge. Ancient one of knowledge, you know the secrets of transformation, of bringing forward something from nothing, of giving form to the formless. You have no fear of the swirling waters, begetting life and death and life again. May I be like you, great crone, not dimming my light for anybody, not apologizing for who I am. May I know the humor of light and the light of humor right through to my bones. And we'll chant together, Igoret Hakma Or. <clears throat> Igoret Hakma Or. 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 And let's breathe in, Igoret. Breathe out, Hakma Or. Please repeat after me. I am and I am becoming. I am, I am and I am becoming. I am pure radiant awareness. I am pure radiant awareness. So before we close the ritual, I'd like you to join me in singing these names that we've chanted together. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can get the words up. So just give me a second. Here it is. All right, let me try again. I maybe I'll do the share screen first. Anna, do you remember how I did this? Yes, share screen. Yeah. And then okay. your computer files come up and you pick the computer file you want to share. Okay. So. You've got to click share screen first. Yeah, it's not showing. Down the bottom. Next to me. I've got it down at the bottom, but it's not showing over here. Oh, maybe I have to click it. I'll, I'll click it. Here you go. I'll click it and see if you have. Uh, no. Hmm. And now I've lost it. <laughs> Hold on a second. And, okay, so we'll go Um, okay, I have all these little people down on the right side. Oh no, they haven't got, they haven't got out. Um, Kelly? This is very awkward now. This has come out. Maybe I've lost it. Okay, I'm viewing your screen, so can you just X out of that and we'll... Trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to. I don't know why it's not going out. Stop share. Okay. I'll yeah. go. Oh, yay. Okay. But I can still I have to get out of that. X. Good. <laughs> so we'll be singing the same chants. Uh, so I'll review them for you. Uh, the first is Kala Nora. Ein Sach Or, and then Ama Aima, Ein Sach Or, and Igoret 
Hakma or and uh, they all uh, it all has the same melody so once we've sung through all of those it just repeats all the same melody <laughs> Just breathe that in for a moment. Breathing in these three light faces of the triple goddess. The bride of light, the mother of light, the cosmic crone of light. Kala. Ama. Egoret. Blessed be.
lost my page. Well, we're going to say a prayer while you're finding your page. Goddess of the full moon, renewer of life, we thank you for your presence here tonight, today, and today. And we bid you farewell until we next meet under your light. May it shine forever within our hearts and light our steps so that we may go in peace. Andrew stays seated as we have our closing, as we say Ya Mariam together. Ya Mariam, blessed be. Blessed be. Now we just have a few minutes where um, different one of us may share something that's on our hearts from the time that we've had together or anything that's alive in them right now. So just unmute yourself to speak to us all. First of all, I'd like to say thank you, Amina, for the very beautiful ritual. This mm. really deeply moving and for the novenas and, and the privilege to work with you. And to be mm. alongside you. Well, it is, it is quite mutual. I'm, I'm just so delighted that you're down under over there. It's just yeah. uh, making my day. <laughs> mm. Mary Magdalene is connecting us and, and spreading her message everywhere in the world. At, and we are her channels and her, her instruments for peace in the world. I, I think this is a, a blessed thing that we uh, all partake of. Ya Mariam. Yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, um, my heart is filled with gratitude for this experience. I never anticipated that we could be together in this way. And uh, Amina, it's been particularly delightful to meet you, Amina G, and uh, Zebunisa and Andrew, um, and everyone in the room. What a treat. Thank you so much. Mm. I'd also just like to share um, my deep gratitude to you, Amina, and Anna, Andrew, KG, KJ Phoenix, for introducing me to Miri, Miriama, um, who I have also been to her cave in the south of France. And it's an amazing place to um, understand the poverty that she lived in, in that cave. Mm. Unlike all the cathedrals of France that are so rich and dripping in wealth, her cave is grey and cold. But it has this mass, most magnificent um, place up on the mountains looking out over the whole of the land that really is the most beautiful place and when I was in the break I just checked in with myself to see if I needed any essences that I have as I'm a homeopath and I work with essences and this one here the golden radiance tested in for me it's an orchid essence mm. and if I may just very briefly read what it says Enjoy the radiance of one's inner light, opens the throat chakra and connects to golden light within the inner chamber of the heart chakra. Mm. When the inner chamber opens, its wisdom can ascend into the throat and brow chakras, enhances our spiritual perspective of everyday life. So the golden radiance was with us all through this experience, and I'm very grateful for it. Thank you. Thank you. So, is there anybody else who would like to say something? Michelle, and I just want to thank Ellen for inviting me to join you 
and um, this has been quite an experience. It's so refreshing to um, get this mm -hmm. close up with mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene's teaching and to yeah. hear the sacred words and the mantras and uh, rituals to honor our ancient, our ancestors. So thank you for get, putting this together. This is fabulous. And where are you from? I'm from Grass Valley, where Ellen Fights Hall lives. Uh huh. And what state is that? In California. California. Welcome. Beautiful. Oh, sorry, that's right. You're from New Zealand. <laughs> well, I'm from Australia. Australia. Yeah. I can't believe I'm meeting so many women from all over the world. That's right. Australia, New Zealand, California, yeah. South Greenville. I mean, Greenville, South. Carolina. Carolina, yeah. Thank you for joining us. And is there anyone else? Well, I'm realizing it's getting a little bit late in some of the areas of the states, and um, and it's getting to our lunchtime, our noon, which is a beautiful time to finish. So I thank you again for all coming. Um, I have recorded this session so I can share it with people. Uh, so some of you have been on the um, on this Zoom call and I haven't known or I haven't got your emails. So I hope you can all share it with each other because I won't know, I won't remember everybody who's here. And if you want to be on my email list so I can let you know of when we do um, I'd love to do it again in a couple of weeks' time and do the the uh, the new moon ritual. So would people be up for that? A couple of weeks after Easter? Yes. Okay. Well, soon enough, I'll send you the recordings and some details of when we will meet again. And so, yamariyam, and um, go in peace. Zeb, just yeah. before you close, um, it's Hanuman. Jayanti starting this evening and I just sent a link through on the chat box for um, a beautiful music event that's happening um, over the 12 hour period starting uh, starting 11 p.m. Australian time but anyway there's a link there for Hanuman Jayanti and uh, <coughs> blessings to all. Lovely thank you very much so People can take a note of that. I'm not sure once we switch it off that you can, uh, so it can't hear you. Yeah, once you go, once you turn it off, it'll be gone. So, so you what you can off. do is um, if you go, see the three little dots on the bottom right-hand corner of the chat. Yep. If you press on that, it says save chat. Oh, very good. You can do that or you can cut and paste it out. So it'll be saved just to the clipboard? Ah. Uh, yeah. I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> saved. So cut, cut and paste it out is probably the safest. Yeah. Okay. Great. Or just, just Google Hanuman Jayanti on uh, Facebook. Okay. Beautiful. Google. Search. Okay. So here's some beautiful music which to go to sleep with or to journey through the rest of your day.
Thank you.